So first things first, I just want to say this video is for those who already did their research and they decided they want to own a tarantula, but they're kind of undecided on do they want to start with an adult or a sling. Hello everyone, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Irene. So this week I'm doing another talking video. I haven't done this in like forever because I was pretty nervous the first time when I was doing it. But um, but now I think I'm more comfortable talking in front of the camera so I guess I'll do another video like this. I won't be focusing a lot on getting adult tarantulas because I don't have um, a lot of adult tarantulas. I don't have a lot of uh, adult tarantulas compared to other keepers but I do have a lot of slings so that's what I want to focus on. Let's start talking about the pros of buying a sling. The reason why I want to start with slings because all the adult tarantulas are really really expensive here in the US. If you were to get a really common species like a Fomopelma simani or a Calcote, those um, I believe I believe they cost around $100, sometimes less, sometimes more, depending on where you buy them from. But other than that, all the other tarantulas are really, really expensive. I'm talking about adults only. I would say $50 is the average for a sling. Sometimes you can see curly hairs or teeth vegans, they go around for $20 or $30, and they are often offered as freebies as well. I got my curly hair as a freebie last year. I spoke to people who don't live in the US about their tarantula prices, I'm kind of really jealous over that. Let me know what you guys' um, tarantula prices is in your country and just comment down below and let me know. I'm pretty sure they're not as expensive as in the US. So in conclusion, even though the slings aren't um, as cheap as compared to other countries, but it's still cheap within the US, that's why I started off with a lot of slings. And the second thing to consider is that slings, they don't take up a lot of space in your home. Let's say, for example, for dwarf tarantulas, um, for those to only get up to 2 inches, you only need a 6x6x6 six 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 cube for them. You could give them a bigger space if you want to, but it's all up to personal preferences. But I would prefer to keep my tarantulas in an adequate size, sometimes a little bit more than what they needed. If you can do that, that would be great. And the third thing that you want to consider is enclosure. So there is a big chance there are enclosures or potential enclosure that's readily available in your home but you just haven't realized yet. But if you don't, you can also go out and just kind of buy something like this from the container store. Um, these are like $2 I think if you live in the US. So I think it's pretty cool. After I buy these, um, these are the holes that I made um, using soldering irons. Just don't do it in your room because um, it can smell really bad. Or you can use a dram vial from uh, the seller that you purchased from, like these. This is actually provided by the seller when I purchased the tarantula. The holes are made by the seller, I didn't touch anything. And all I did was just put on my label and just continue using um, this dram vial. Or I have something like this. This is this also came from the seller when I unboxed them. I didn't throw them away. I just reused them and put on my own label. That being said, the point is it's really really easy to get enclosures for a sling compared to an adult. If you don't want to buy these enclosures or spend the extra money, you could also find something like this. So these are just like little jars that uh, when I pick up my pills from the pharmacy, this is how it came in. So you can actually reuse this. But with these containers, you can't really observe the sling whenever you want. So there is a little drawback. If it were up to me, I would spend like an extra one or two dollars just to get a clear enclosure so I can know what is my sling doing. And the fourth thing to consider, which is my favorite part, which is you get to watch them grow. If you guys have been watching my video from the beginning that you know that I have a lot of slings and I feel like uh, with each feeding videos the sling gets a little little bigger every time. It's like every video they're like a new tarantula to me. If you decide to get slings your experiences with tarantulas would also grow with it. So I started collecting tarantulas last year around August and I feel like I'm a lot more confident right now um, just taking care of them. Even with some really skittish old world or new world tarantulas i think i'm fine with them so we're done talking about the pros now i want to talk about the cons of getting slings so the first thing to consider is 
Spleen can be boring, but also to argue against that, tarantulas can be boring to some people, depends on who you ask. They're not dogs, they're not cats, they just sit there in a spot and move around substrate. Even with like some old worlds, like okay, if you provoke them a little bit, they will show you at their posture. Tarantulas, they're meant to be a little bit on the boring side, but if you ask me, I don't think they're boring. I don't know. Um, let me know what you guys think. And the second thing to consider is some species can grow really, really, really slow. So if you don't have the patience for that, it can really be a bummer. Do a lot of research before you want to get a species. Is it a fast growing species or a slow growing one? One example of that is my grandma Stella Rosea. I got her um, last year August. She molted once and that, that was it. And I don't know how long is it going to take for her to, you know, get up to an adult maybe three or four years five or six years i have no idea because i don't know how old this tarantula is another slow growing species which is my grandma stella poker piece my chaco golden knee which is like right here this one has been this small since i got it and i don't know when it's going to get bigger <laughs> but i have the patience for it so because i know some people they don't like to wait they prefer some fast growing species but yeah again just do your research and know what you want before you buy a sling and try not to regret it after buying it i guess and the third con is you probably need to check on your slings more often than your adult tarantulas. You could technically not check on your adult tarantulas, not as often, but I still check on them um, every like two or three days. But for my slings, I check on them actually twice a day, but that is just me. You don't have to check on them twice a day. Once a day is fine. Sometimes I get really paranoid. I had some sling that just passed away for some reason. I don't know why. So it kind of makes me really paranoid. So I checked on them twice a day. And with slings, it can be a little tricky because you want to give them adequate water, but you also don't want to overwater them. So you just have to give them a little bit and then check on them after to see if they need more water. They can go without food for a while, but they cannot live without water. So that is also something to keep in mind of how much effort that you want to put in to keeping tarantulas. So the last con that I want to talk about is enclosures. Even though it's really easy to find an enclosure for your slings, but slings grow, especially for fast growing species. So at first, um, they may be okay in the size like this, but over time, maybe one or two months, you're gonna have to upgrade to something like this. And then another two month pass or three month, um, you're going to need something like this. Which is okay if you have a lot of space, but for those of you who don't have a lot of space, it's important to consider what is going to happen when these correct tarantulas, when they grow big. Also, do you want to go through um, constantly upgrading your enclosure? That is one thing to think about. If you get an adult tarantula, you just have to get their permanent enclosure and that's it. So that being said, that is all the pros and cons I wanted to talk about today. If I missed anything, just comment down below and let me know. I just want to share my opinion and hopefully this video can help someone who's getting tarantulas Um, because I didn't know all of this when I was getting my tarantula. And that is all for today's video and I'll see you guys next week. Bye!